Wasserman, and um, unbelievably proud to be here today to honor Ann and Linda and Women and Children First Bookstore for their over 35 years of being together, over 25 years of being here in Andersonville, and the commitment that they've made to our neighborhood, to all of their customers, to so many causes. So today we're here basically to say thank you to them. To leave things off, um, we have two phenomenal women leaders, and one of the great successes from Ann and Linda in this bookstore has been inspiring women to go into fields like politics and government, into business, and two women that can't, could, be, couldn't better exemplify that than our state representative who had a wonderful house here on Farragut, um, Kelly Cassidy, Representative Yay. Cassidy. Yay. And our dynamic state senator, also from down the block, Heather yeah, Stain. So Heather. Oh, so we do have proclamations here from the state senate honoring these two. I won't take all the time to read it. I want to just be more personal, but they're each getting one. Um, you know, women and children first. So I have three kids. We have certainly done an enormous amount of shopping here myself for all of the book clubs and I am in. We go here. I can't believe how many people I've come and heard speak here. It's just such a resource. I mean, I do live just down the block. We moved here 20 years ago, and I think, you know, maybe it was 19 years in, you know, 11 months and 10 days since I discovered this place. And um, it's just phenomenal. It's such a resource all along the street. I want to recognize and say hi to Ellen Shepard, who's back here, Yay. constantly bringing us fabulous stores here, making sure that people like Women and Children First have a great home, and really just thank everybody for making them this stay here possible. Independent bookstores now are a rarity. We need to support them. So we're so thrilled that they're staying in-house. I mean, what just a fabulous story all around. They have just been such a tremendous asset to this neighborhood, and they really give this neighborhood its warmth and its heart. So really, thank you, Linda, and, and it's just amazing. I lived down the block for the better part of 18 years. My kids basically grew up here. I think if Miss Linda were to start reciting the story time rules, Daniel, who was inside, couldn't finish them. We used to jokingly refer to him as the mayor of story time. Uh, I was sworn in here. This place, uh, this, this bookstore is such an important part of not just our neighborhood, but my life and my children's lives. They're scattered about here. There's food inside, so they're not likely to be out here. Uh, I am so thrilled with the story you have written and the story that you will continue uh, that makes our neighborhood so wonderful and such a great place to be, and I'm so proud that we have this opportunity to honor you in such a, a tangible way. I want to recognize Lynn Mooney um, and Sarah Hollenbeck, who are the new owners of Women and Children. And one of the many legacies um, that Ann and Linda have left is a smooth transition. And as Kelly and Heather have said, um, Women and Children's First Bookstore is more than just a bookstore. It's a neighborhood community place. And to have that continuity and that care continue on with, with Sarah and Lynn, I think is something very, very special for all of us. Um, Women and Children First Bookstore has been on this corner for 25 years. And for those of you that have been around, um, you know that Andersonville did not always look like this. And um, through work of Ellen Shepard, the other pioneers, the other business owners, uh, it's Arts Weekend here in our community, we have really made Andersonville a destination. And Lynn and Ann have helped spearhead that, in many ways big and small. They have helped lead the renaissance in our community. They've had a place that people have been welcomed to, and they brought people to this neighborhood. Every business along this stretch has benefited from Women and Children First Bookstore being here. And um, they have laid the path for the future. Also keeping it independent, and keeping out the big boxes, keeping out the, the national chain. It's with great honor, irony that we're celebrating here today when I've got a bunch of vacant Borders stores and Barnes & Noble stores. Um, but the local business uh, model is in the DNA, and Ann and Linda have helped shepherd that. They have done so much. Um, they have helped other business owners. They have been leaders and pioneers, as I said before, for women to go into different fields. Um, 
The gay and lesbian community, very much like in uh, Lakeview at Ann Sather's there, has always had Women and Children First Bookstore as a place to come together and talk through important issues that affect the community and lead on those issues that have helped transform our neighborhood, our state, our world, our country. So there's always been a place for them to be here. Um, they've affected so many families. You know, my daughter is inside again with uh, uh, Kelly's boys eating, but... Um, <laughs> And reading books. Um, is there any staff in there? No. Yeah, three, ki three kids. Um, but they've exposed so many people to literature and for kids. And for families that come to the neighborhood that are new, they come to Women and Children's First Bookstore, but they learn about the neighborhood. They learn about all the things that are going on here. It has been a wonderful, welcome place. Um, I, wanna, I want you to think about this, too. Um, what other bookstore in Chicago or anywhere in the world has hosted a former president, Jimmy Carter, a current president, Barack Obama, who came here to announce he was running for U.S. Senate, um, a future president, Hillary Clinton, and a woulda, shoulda, coulda been, with the exception of Florida President Al Gore, yes. um, and Women's Shows for Bookstore. And I must say that um, that the, text, the president from Texas, I think there's been a lot of books that have sold over this counter talking about some of the things that he didn't do wrong, or did do wrong policy-wise, so um, he helped the bottom line, I think, in the books. <laughs> uh, but it's been a wonderful place, and it's been a labor of love, and Ann and Linda have had a great staff. Um, anyone that's walked in this bookstore has felt welcome, and that comes from them. You feel love, you feel welcomeness when you walk in here. Um, and that comes from the top. And they have persevered. Having a bookstore for this many years, through the tough times, through the economy, through the, the polar vortexes of the world. Um, but they've done it together. They've done it with loyalty. They've done it with commitment to our neighborhood. We are better off in our neighborhood because of them and because of their work. And we're very honored to be here today to celebrate that. Um, so it's with great, great honor and privilege that to, it's for me to say that, you know, on behalf of your friends, your family, your customers, um, all the people you've served, our entire community and city, um, you know, you've had the welcome sign up for all these years for our community. Today we have the thank you sign going up for you. So I want to, we're going to dedicate the street and honor Women and Children's First Bookstore, and we're going to pull this off. Come on. Hopefully this will work. Very exciting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Uh. first way and and this is women and children first. <laughs> Great. Yay. Here, this is a little better. <laughs> we have a second one. We have one for everybody. Oh, thank you, Mary. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, Harry, thank you so much. I just we have um, such terrific public servants in this neighborhood. Uh, you know, Marion Vellini, the former alderman, uh, took us on a tour of the neighborhood. She actually was the realtor for this building. <laughs> and she took us over to Marianne Smith's office, who was the alderman then, and she wanted us to come in this neighborhood. Um, I don't remember anybody in Lincoln Park, our former neighborhood, ever doing that. Yeah. Um, they took us on tours, Carol Ronan, Jan Schakowsky, Heather Staines, Kelly Cassidy. These are not just names that I get on, you know, fundraiser cards in the mail. These are our real friends, real supporters who shop here, who bring their children here, um, who tell other people in the neighborhood about us. I mean, we, we could not have landed 
in a better spot than this corner uh, in Andersonville. So it, it, there's so much support um, from the public servants in this neighborhood who work together so beautifully. I think Anne maybe wants to say a word about the chamber and what they've done. <coughs> well, I want to say, uh, I just want to say first, thank you all for being here. This is, uh, this is so much fun. <laughs> When I thought about this morning and uh, the comments Linda and I might make, all I could think of was how grateful I am uh, to for so many things. And, uh, they keep the streets clean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we're. I hope we can get all our thank yous in. But I want to thank. Uh, I want to thank in particular the neighborhood, um, starting with uh, well, where to start. I so appreciate the Andersonville Chamber of Commerce, who is really to be credited with keeping this neighborhood independent. We have done our part with that um, and working with the Andersonville Chamber, but. Ellen and Jessica and uh, Jason and forgive me if anybody else is here who I've not seen, but I've just done an amazing job. Uh, and I want to say, as Linda mentioned, we felt welcome in this neighborhood even before we moved to this neighborhood because the Edgewater Development Corporation actually sought us out uh, and brought us up here and uh, gave us a tour and said Andersonville would be a great place for you to move to this world. Why were they right? In so many respects, I mean, with all the, just all the terrific people, uh, the other great businesses in the community and the business leaders in the community um, have just been crucial to Women and Children First's success over the last 25 years since we've been here. Linda? Well, you know, I'm looking out at everybody here, and I know everyone. <laughs> you are all familiar to me. If if when we go inside and recept, uh, I, I forget your name. Forgive me, but I my my cousins are here. My oldest friends are here. My partner is here, um, and it's it's so beautiful to see all of you who I see in the store, and feel your love and good wishes. It's You are a great bunch of regular customers and family and friends. It's, it's just beautiful to see you all here. Um, we have a lot of people to thank and I think we're going to um, give you a little entertainment now. Um, and, and then we're going to move it inside and I hope you all can join us. Um, Starting off the entertainment will be our dear, dear friend Shanta Narula, who has been performing, singing, making music, and telling stories in Chicago for um, almost 35 years. And we were fortunate enough to have her work here for a while and add her wonderful voice. And um, today she's uh, going to sing for us. And then when we go inside, um, we have also asked our dear friend Yvonne Zipter, who is a wonderful journalist and poet, and she has composed a poem for this occasion. Um, and, you know, I, I thought like an inauguration. We should, we, we should have music and we should have poetry. Um, and if anybody wants to dance later, that would be great. Uh, but, uh, so I do hope you'll follow us inside where there's a microphone, but right now, Shanta, 